great church. We don't know who will be next. But I would like to say that let's stay in prayer for Philip, the Shingles, and, and uh, Louise, and all that Shingle family. They lost their sister, Gladys Brown. Let's pray for that family. Let's pray mighty for that family. They will never today might be some out our family tomorrow.
get better to stay in the mental health. So, so first of all, we would like to ask you to just to come in and dwell with us. Let your sweet, holy, and divine spirit fall on us freshly, Lord. Lord, and above all things, forgive us all, for, forgive us for all our sins, because we have sinned and come short of your glory. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you for our homes, our transportation. We thank you for our traveling. Thank you for the highways and byways. Thank you just be with our governors and leaders and be with them and strengthen them in the way you would have them to be, Lord. Guide them, O Jehovah. Because we have no other God before you. We thank you for sitting high looking down on us this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for opening our eyes to a brand new day, a day we've never seen before, Lord. Lord, we even pray for the sick and shit in all over the world. We pray for the ones that's homeless and underbraised, Lord. We know they are there, but we can't do nothing about it. But you have all power in your hand. And if we ask, you say it shall be given. So we ask you today to take care of them also, Lord. Because they are somebody's child too. Lord, we thank you for our pastor and the first lady of this church. We thank you for our male chorus and all the wives of this church. We ask that they sing from the devil they hard for you and you only, Lord. Let it be your glory. As we go throughout the state and travel the dangerous highways, that you just watch over and yeah. let no hurt home and danger come upon us. Yeah. As we go to and fro, we ask that when we get back home, that our home will be safe and sound just yeah. like we yeah. left. We know the road won't be easy, Lord. You told us it wouldn't be easy because you bad the cross, got buried in the side, but all that was for us, Lord. So we thank you this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
doesn't do anything about it. Amen. We just have to accept what the Lord does. Yeah. And tell God thank you for the lives and the time that you've given us to share with one another. Yeah. I want to ask the question today. Do you believe in the power of prayer? I'm asking you a honest, and I expect an honest answer. Do you believe in the power of an honest prayer? Not merely just saying words, but mean what you say. Amen. Prayer should be a part of our lives. Amen. Without prayer, we cannot go on. Amen. We're living in a dangerous time. Amen. Amen. Every which way you turn, something went wrong with some loved ones that are going on. And I think God is trying to tell us all something. Amen. Because there's nothing new to him. Yes, sir. This virus ain't new to him. There's nothing new under the sun. With that being said, could you go to the book of James? The power of prayer. Go to James chapter 5. And maybe after this day we move on to the book, but Chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 17 and 18. Let's begin with. James chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Listen to what he says. Oh, let's read 16 for a better understanding. Confess your trespasses to one another. And what? Pray for one another. That ye may be healed. Listen at this. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The sincere prayer, the honest prayer. I'm talking about that one when you pray to God and you ain't playing. Now, verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed what? Honestly, that it would not rain. And look what he said. And it did not rain on the earth for what? Three years and six months. Now this right here is, is saying it to somebody. Maybe things ain't coming out like you think they ought to have. And what you need to do is go back and pray again. Amen? Amen. Verse 18 tells us that. And he what? And he what? And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produces its fruit. Where did the power come from? You may be seated. From the Almighty. Power come from the Almighty God. James, who was the brother of Jesus, introduced faith, works, faith, doing, and praying. Somebody, somebody read. I'm going to pick on Deacon Martha a little bit. I see him out there. Matthew 17. Look at Matthew 17. Sometimes we increase prayer by fasting. 
Matthew 17 and 21. Sometimes when it don't come together, God could be telling us you lack something. Sometimes you got to push the plate back. Amen. You got to push all of that stuff back and look what he says here. I'm ready, Deacon. Sometimes you got to push things away and you got to meditate just you and God. Because after all, it's you. You're going to have to answer for you. I'm going to have to answer for me. Can't nobody else answer for me. Can't nobody else answer for you. So prayer and fast. Now Deacon, Deacon Mappa read that uh, look at Matthew 21 and 22. Here's a page of this flipping, that's good. Mm -hmm. Matthew 21 and 22. Now listen at this. How do you know he won't do a thing if you ain't never asked him? <laughs> How do you know he won't hear you? Why, 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 Amen? Amen? Sometimes God waiting on not others to pray for you, but he's waiting on you to pray. Amen. Matthew, Matthew 21, 22. Deacon, if you would. Deacon Mountain, read that one for me. Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe it, ye shall receive. If you ask it in prayer, you shall what? Amen. Amen. It's just something about prayer. Amen. That book of the devil's need. The devil said it can be on your track. And if you stop long enough and pray. What did he say in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14? He said, and pray and seek my faith. And turn. For I make your ways. He said, then I will do what? And will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, 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 we're going to go. Now, anybody get ready to read. Anybody. Now, uh, sometime we need to take it a step further. Someone look at Luke 23 and 42. The Lord will answer. Yes, he will. Somebody say amen. amen. Luke 20, 23 and 42. Read that, Brother Fowler. 23 and 42. And it's a good to have your Bible. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's good. That's good. This was a this was a dying thief. A sinner. On the cross, man getting ready to die. Look at Jesus. Pray. Not a long prayer. All he said was, Lord, what? Quit thou. That tell you that he saw Jesus as being more than just an ordinary man. What else did that tell you? That if I'm sincere, God will answer my prayer. Lord, remember me when thou. Okay, somebody over on the latest side. Go to 2 Kings chapter 20. Prayer. You know, you know, we don't do it like we used to. Folks used to have a prayer meeting. Can somebody say amen? Have a prayer meeting. They, they were programmed to pray about things. The first thing they would say is, let's pray about it. And then you tell somebody now, let's pray about it. They wonder what you're talking about. 
Okay, 2 Kings chapter 20 says what? Anybody? Keep reading. Okay, go ahead. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I bespeak thee, O Lord, remember. Right there, remember. Remember. God wants us to remember that we ain't in this battle alone. God wants us to remember that he holds the weight of the world in his hand. He wants us to remember. He said, call on me. And I'll answer thee. So I'll even be with you in trouble. Can anybody say amen with that? I, I'll be with you when your heart is broken. I, I'll be with you in trouble. I'll honor you and then I will show you the salvation, the power, the power of prayer. One day, Jesus. Was getting ready to leave his disciples. And he knew they were going to drop their head. He knew they wasn't going to understand. Oh, good God Almighty. You, 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 you and me don't understand. We got it kind of backwards when we leave this world. We can go home to live with a mighty God. To live with a mighty God means you rest from your labor and your works. Do follow you. But here's what Jesus told them, hopefully and merciful and the will the disciples. And someone read John chapter 14. Verse John chapter 14, he says I think we need to read that with you. Come on, y'all. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in what? Oh, now let's do it again. Now, if I believe in God, amen. amen? I got to learn that when somebody is with God, yeah. oh, good God oh. Almighty, they're much better off than we are. Paul said it's a game to die. Yeah. In other words, if you die, that's the only way you're going to have to be able to go see him. When a person close their eyes on this side, you open them up right in the face of a mighty God. Let not go what? You believe in what? God believe in you. Now listen to this. You don't just leave him. He said, in my in my in my there are and then the scripture says and John said, if it were not I would have told you. I go what? And if I go in what? I will come again and receive. But I got to tell you something. Unpreparedness won't get you get there. If you ain't prepared, you ain't gonna get there. But if you are prepared, and he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That what I am, what? Got to be prepared. And look at that six verse down there. Somebody look at that six verse. The power of prayer. You got to talk to the Lord. All right, verse 6 of John chapter 14 says what? I am the way. Did you think that he would allow us to go on coming to the church, reading the Bible and believing in him if he wasn't real? Do you believe that one day he walked on this earth? That one day he died on a pill called Calvary? One day he rose again and declared all power? And then in Matthew 7 and 7, read it. He said, what? Don't think about it, ask him. Don't just think about it, ask him. You know the power of God is so strong you can be sitting back there with whoever you sit with 
And if God been good to you, I mean, show enough good God Almighty from Zion, been good to you all to just start thinking and right now in the midst. Let them folks see you thinking. Huh? Can I get a witness that God been good to you? Who woke you up this morning early? You might not have felt so well, but who was it? Okay. Nobody. Nobody but Jesus. Matthew 7 and 7. What did it say? Did he say what? Do you know as much time, and I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Do you know we spend more time meddling? And something don't even concern us than we do Prayer and praying to God saying, hold me in your loving arm until this storm is. I know it's a storm. You know it's a storm. But what, what about it? God knows it's a storm. How many can do like that man said, what is the revival? That we can't even walk? I can't even walk? Without you doing what? You gave me health and what? You give me a mind to hold on just to. Yeah. Every since the world began, yeah. prayer has been a part of me. Yeah. Prayer would teach us right from wrong. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus was a praying man. Yeah. Look at Luke 6 and 12. He was a praying man. Amen. You, you can start praying right there where you're sitting at right now. If God done not open a door for you, he done place your feet on solid ground. Good God Almighty, if you shout and know what you're shouting about, let them talk about you. Because that time not, they can talk about you anyway. Luke 6 and 12, okay? Jesus prayed all night. I know that you got something on your heart that you can pray about. You got something there, if it ain't for you, you know somebody that's standing in the need of prayer. Somebody in here right now is standing in the need of a healing. And you, you're afraid to tell the Christians about it. Although you're supposed to confess one to the other, but you know, Christian life, no, church folks like we get out and talk about one another. And that's not being a Christian. He said, talk to each other about it. And the prayers of a righteous man availed much. And this is how he let us know that it was us. He said, Elijah was a natural man. Just like me and you. Do you hear what I'm saying? But he prayed and it didn't rain. Oh my God, ain't God good? Uh, anybody ever lay down at night, and this right here, I'll say something to you. Anybody ever lay down at night, you maybe you couldn't sleep so well, and, and, and you, 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 you slumbered and you slept and you, 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 were, you, you, you was in a storm and you, 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 you knew that if God didn't come in that storm and deliver you, you wasn't going to make it. But as soon as you put that thing in God's hand, I mean, don't so put it in God's hand. The next thing you know, parts were the moving. You hear what I'm saying? She's going to look at Acts 16 and 25. Amen. The power of Acts 16 and 25. We're getting on over that now. Oh my God, I'm going to have to quit in a little bit now. Acts 16 and 25. Then I'm going to read it. Acts 16 and 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sung a song, praising to God. And the prison heard them. I'm going to say this right here. 
You can have secret prayer. But if you've been born again, if you've really been touched, if you ever been raised from a sick bed like I have, I'm talking about one of them kind of sickness where you thought you wasn't going to get away. Yeah. And God raised you up and, and started your life look like all over again. I might have had some respect then, but I don't care who hear me pray now. I, I, I don't care who hear me say, Lord, I thank you for one more, one more day. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody, somebody look, at, look at Matthew 6 and 33, Miss Bentley. I'll see you back there. And all of what? Seek ye first what? And his righteousness. And all of these things. Well, I don't care what I mean the scientists and all of them said. But there's a bunch of deep down inside. They tell me when the church start praying, the storm is passing. Yeah. I don't care what the doctor might say, yeah. but when the church starts praying, yeah. healing yeah. take place. Yeah. He said, if anybody's sick among you, Thank you. 